Hello, I'm Louis and this is a short video about cinematic grading for photos or how I sort of grade photos really. Um, I've had a few people ask me about the sort of techniques I use in Photoshop so I thought this video would be quite good in explaining some of them and hopefully they're useful to somebody. So uh, yeah, let's open the image up in camera raw. Uh, firstly I quite like to get uh, as much latitude as possible in the image, so a sort of flat image as possible to so it can uh, so I can process a lot of it in Photoshop and I do that by uh, well, well just sort of taking away all of the uh, contrast boosting sliders like blacks and contrast and uh, turn up feel like quite a lot so this brings back some of the detail in the shadows um, I use sharpen quite a lot in camera roll, it's pretty good uh, because I like the whole holding down control so you can see the effect the, uh, the masking makes as well as uh, just seeing it up and, yeah. Uh, yeah that's pretty cool and I'm gonna make it even more flat by duplicating this layer uh, image adjustments. Uh, it's good to sort of open it up in 16 bits as well, it just gives you a bit more. Uh, you can push the image a bit further. Uh, shadow highlights. Not so much highlights, but uh, just turn this down so it's not too HDR like. Um, yeah, that seems about right. Cool. Knock back a smidge, maybe. Uh, and then the next step I like to do is adding some fake volumetric light or the feeling of just the added sort of feeling of atmosphere or dust in the scene. We're getting a soft brush and just picking a sort of highlight color and painting it in really, uh, scaling it way up. Using the crop tool now and again just to clear out all of the pixels that are outside the um, canvas area just so it saves, saves memory and stuff. It just makes everything go a bit smoother. Cool. Uh, so I'll just hide that for a second. Uh, get a blue the other side because it's quite nice. Cool light from the window here and a warm light from a sort of a desk lamp. Paint some of that in. So you can use hue saturation or control U to boost this up a little bit. Have more of an effect. Scale this way up to do the crop thing to delete everything outside. Bit more scaling. Good. Should make that a bit more saturated as well. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, yeah, uh, this one I'll have just knock it back a bit. I also want to add some blue color to the left hand side as well. I like that. Uh, switch this on, not have it full whack yet. Uh, create a black and white layer uh, where I can adjust, just sort of adjust the color tone quite nicely. Boost up the yellows a bit, it's quite nice. Move some blues this side. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, Keep that on normal and just knock out some of the color. Uh, some of the soft light, uh, sometimes using soft light overlay or multiply gives some sort of nice, uh, nice sort of effects. Well, yeah, I'll just have a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Uh, first sort of curves layer. Let me boost the contrast up with a nice S curve. And do some uh, cross processing type stuff by. Uh, uh, well, the way I like to do it is take out some of the blues in the highlights, put them in the shadows, like so, maybe a bit more. I overdo it, I can always sort of turn it down later if it's a bit too extreme. Maybe some more reds, tiny bit of red and red in the shadow and 
tailing off before it gets to the highlights. Yeah, that's quite nice. Um, let me turn this up a smidge. Uh, maybe even more contrasting like that. Could be cool. Uh, right, I'm going to add some vignette action down here. So, Shift F5 to fill a layer with white. Use the lens correction tool, which has a, a nice way of correcting vignette, but we're going to use it here for putting it in. It's going to it's going to max it out actually. Troll and soft light, so it affects it brightens up the middle a bit as well. Troll and multiply, so it just darkens everything down a bit. Might just boost it a bit so it only affects the corners and maybe adds a little bit of red in there Ooh, maybe not, I don't know, okay Cool. Um, yeah, that seems good. Uh, create a new layer. This is quite nice for sort of a, a tone mapping, or kind of tone mapping, it's, or sort of like dodge and burning, really. Uh, create a fifty percent grey layer. Put it on overlay. Get a nice big soft brush, like this one. Just like that. Switch these to the default black and white foreground background. Use X to switch between them. And start sort of uh, painting areas you want to boost and bring attention to. I'll, I'll go over this and again in a second. I'll put load here because it's pretty light here anyway. Uh, I'm going to blur the hell out of that just so it doesn't look so or it doesn't look like brush strokes cool I'll take this down even more and compensate a bit with the that uh, now I'm going to do just some sort of localised uh, curves adjustment by using the quick mask Q on the keyboard just to paint uh, an area you'd want to select Q to release select oop. select inverse curves adjustment layer and just play about just gonna unlock that and move it over I might just actually bring that sort of soft light up a bit. Take down the blue a bit, a bit overkill. Or is it? Maybe I'll just take it down in that, on this camera. Cool. And just even more contrast. Stuff like it. up a bit. Uh, uh, create a new layer as well. This is uh, just good for sort of noise and breaking up artifacting. 50% grey. Filter noise. Add noise. That's a bit dodgy. Sort that out. Um, cool. Scale it up a bit. Just so it isn't too perfect. And soft light. Actually, that's probably fine. Um, so yeah, that kind of breaks up things a little bit. 
So whereas before you've got sort of edges of noise where there isn't uh, no noise to noise is a bit abrupt and that just sort of evens things up and needs to knock it back a bit and not too extreme cool yeah okay I'm going to call that done um, thanks for watching uh, hopefully some of that is helpful uh, and uh, yeah check out my photos on flickr.com forward slash to create the number two create thanks very much bye